Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back again together and just looking at that IEB uh, 2018 paper as we continue to prepare towards the exams. Uh, I want to say to all of those who will be writing the IEB exams, all the best to you. And uh, yeah, I'll continue to try and assist you in whatever way that I can uh, to get through this uh, exam hurdle. Right, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. And uh, for those of you who might be needing assistance with mathematics or physical science, uh, you're more than welcome to just send me an email. And our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, so we're looking at electrodynamics. You know, it's one of those sections that ah, it's either you get it or you don't. Uh, but I'll try as best as I possibly can to, you know, explain certain concepts here. OK, um, so just stay with me. Right. And for those of you who are also writing the, you know, the DBE exam, uh, please, I want you to know that uh, you can actually learn quite a lot uh, uh, through this session. So please don't be uh, thrown off by the fact that they are IEB. Uh, ultimately, physics is physics is physics. OK, right. So let's get into the question. All right. So first of all, they're giving us uh, a current carrying uh, wire, which is PQ. So there's our PQ wire there. And it's placed between two permanent magnet poles. OK, as shown in the diagram. So there's our magnets there. Right. Um, so the first question that they ask us, uh, they say on the diagram on the answer sheet okay uh, obviously we don't have that diagram right they say sketch lines to show the direction of the magnetic field due to the permanent magnets right so i want you to remember that magnetic field will always move from north to south so uh, because you know we didn't have that diagram uh, i'm just going to try and you know just uh, illustrate those magnets so if this is our north side and this is our south side of the magnet okay uh, remember that uh, magnetic field we say that it will move from the north side to the south side so how i will draw those field lines okay uh, it will be field lines that look like that and they will be moving in a direction from north to south it's very important that you show uh, the direction of that magnetic field right all right the next question they say the force on the wire pq okay is directed into the page now uh, very important for you to actually note whether uh, in this case um, you know will be we're dealing with a motor or a generator okay now the fact that they had mentioned that there's already current that is moving okay uh, does suggest to us that we are going to uh, or rather we are dealing with a a motor okay so that means that uh, if you want to know the difference well we know that with motors we're going to use our left hand right and with generators we use the right hand rule okay so um yeah so they say that the force between wire pq is directed into the page they are asking is the current a direction in the wire from P to Q or from Q to P. Right. Now, ladies and gents, uh, obviously, we're going to use our left hand. You know, everyone just keeps asking me, hey, but how do you use that left hand, right hand stuff? OK, so first of all, remember that we place our uh, thumb, our index finger, our middle finger, right at right hand to each other. Remember that the second or the, uh, you know, your index finger actually is showing you uh, the direction of the field. So we said the field is going in that direction. OK, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, it's going to lose focus a little bit when I keep moving around. OK, so the field is going in that direction and they told us that the force is actually going, um, uh, the force is going into the, you know, and uh, yeah, I think they said into the page, right? Um, OK, let's verify that. They said the force is directed. Yes, they said into the page, right? So um, remember, the thumb shows us the force, OK? Right. And in this case, the field, right? So I'm just going to 
maybe let let me just skew the drawing a bit so that you can see it so there's my field going from north to south and we said the current uh, uh, rather the force is going into the page so in this case the direction of my current will be in that direction so this is my force going into the page field north to south current should therefore be in that direction so it will be from p to q uh, sorry if you couldn't see that okay right i'd place them at right hand to each other it, you know uh, i didn't want to do uh, too many twists uh, but nonetheless we said forces down into the page right field north to south like that okay and therefore the current would move in that direction there okay right so uh, our answer there is p to q all right and then uh, now they are telling us we've got a rectangular conducting loop that travels from left to right at a constant velocity through a magnetic field okay directed out of the page all right as shown uh, diagram uh, in diagrams a to e okay right now uh, it's just something very important to note remember at point at a it's still outside of the magnetic field okay uh, so there would be no change in magnetic flux in that case uh, so as a result um, yeah uh, there would be no induced current um, so will be at point e okay uh, but i mean if you look at that uh, at c there is no change again you are still within uh, the, the the field in that case so there'll be no change so the actual changes that actually occur here uh, in in terms of the magnetic flux it's it's between actually b and d okay right so um um yeah that's so we'll we'll answer that as as we go along okay right so uh, uh the first question they ask us to state lenz's law uh, remember, uh, you, yeah, you know, when, when uh, you know, the uh, Lenz's law is actually, in a way, a, a the opposite to kind, uh, um, to some extent, uh, you know, of Faraday's law. And it simply states that uh, the induced current flows in a direction so as to set up a magnetic field to oppose the change in magnetic flux. Okay, remember that we say. Uh, the induced current flows in a direction so as to set up a magnetic field to oppose the change in magnetic flux. So in a way, uh, you know, Lenz's law is kind of opposing. Uh, uh, you're trying to actually oppose what is done in uh, Faraday's law. OK, right. So as I had said or stated earlier on, OK, let's continue with the questions. They say during the motion described, OK, at what position a to e is the current induced in the loop okay right now i want you to please uh, stay with me um so i'm going to just try and do this with you so that you can basically understand this all right so you're looking at the direction of motion uh, in that direction right and they told us that the current is actually moving outside or out of the page okay and now we want to now find out what is uh you know the the direction of the of the current so that we know whether uh you know the field would be looping outside or i mean clockwise or anti-clockwise right so come let's try and do it together okay so if you look up uh, at the change there of course our direction of motion is in that direction they said the field is out of the page right so if you look at the looping of the current, uh, it would be in that direction. So it would be clockwise, right? So that would be at B. Okay. So um, if uh, to answer, they said at what positions uh, is the current induced in the loop? It would be at point B. Think about it. And it would also be at point D. Remember, there's no change in magnetic flux here, right? There's only a change. You are entering into the field here. You are moving outside of the field uh, here because that be you're in a constant field. There's no change in uh, flux, so it would be at B, and at B you'd have actually a change that is you know clockwise, right? So that's my field. That's the direction of motion. That's the direction of the current. 
so here you'd have a clockwise um, change okay in the amount in the current and then also at point D uh, and of course I mean if it was clockwise there and now it's moving out of the field there this would be anti-clockwise okay all right now let's continue uh, so that would be 8.2.2 uh, that would be uh, the A and B part of it. Now they say for diagram C, which is this guy over here, they say briefly explain why there is or why there is not an induced current in the loop. You see, they wanted to find out if you understand whether there will be a change or not, right? Uh, I think I've just stated it now, right? So in this case, remember there would be no current in that loop, okay? At position C why because there is no change in magnetic flux and remember uh, Faraday's law says that um, you know the induced EMF right uh, in this case is is directly proportional to the rate of change in magnetic flux right or flux flux linkage but in this particular case because the, the flux wouldn't change uh, because of a constant magnetic field uh, you would actually have uh, zero current flowing okay right i hope that makes sense okay let's move right along all right uh, the second portion of this says we've got a long primary solenoid um which is p uh, has a secondary coil that's wound around the middle as shown in the diagram Okay, so obviously you can see that primary uh, solenoid there has got many windings in it and the secondary one has got fewer windings. Uh, so obviously you would be trying to, you know, to step down. That's a transformer in that case. Uh, you'd be trying to step down, right, uh, that current. So in this case, uh, they are asking us, all right, so they say the current in the primary solenoid changes with time as shown in the diagram okay so um, that is the diagram that's showing us uh, the change in the amount of current so obviously uh, it's constant between two uh, between zero and four seconds okay and in that case the change so which means that induction actually took place here so the change in the amount of current uh, took place between the uh, the, the fourth and the eighth second again it becomes constant at this point here so it means that there was no induced current um, you know obviously in relation to what we, we had previously the points where you would have uh, zero induced current and of course you had another change between the 12th and the 20th second okay now uh, they say state Faraday's law of uh, electromagnetic induction. Okay, I think we did state that uh, earlier on. And it simply says uh, the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. Okay, right. So uh, let's have a look at the next question. Now, the last question they say to us, the maximum EMF induced in the secondary solenoid uh, is 4 millivolts, okay? Um, all right, they said on the graph provided on the answer sheet, draw the corresponding induced EMF versus time graph of the secondary uh, coil, right? They say the relative sizes of the EMF must be included on the graph all right now um so obviously uh, well we don't have first of all we don't have the graph uh, so um, we'll try and just uh, make one up for ourselves so if this was the graph now of course we are talking here about voltage versus time right so this would be voltage over there uh, hopefully you would be given that uh, against time okay and we, we need to make sure that uh, it corresponds to the one that we have there uh, so time was 
given in milliseconds, right? Okay, so uh, first of all, I know that uh, there would be uh, a current would be actually zero. I, I mean, uh, there'd be no change in current uh, between zero and two uh, and four, right? So in that case, it simply means that the change in the induced amount of voltage in that case would simply be zero, right? So there's no change in magnetic flux there. And that's why the current would stay the same. So as a result, it means that our voltage uh, between 0 and 2 and uh, 4, so this would be 4 over there. I, I hope you can understand, um, right? Uh, so now I have got a change here. And note, this is a negative change. But you remember uh, Faraday's law says, well, that's minus N times the change in magnetic flux divided by the change in time. Now, note, once the, the change in flux, okay, the change in the magnetic flux, um, um, you know, is negative, obviously, you have to still multiply by that negative. Now, you realize there's a negative change here, right? So, it simply means that the induced EMF, because of that negative will therefore be positive okay now if you note there because we had a change and they said that the maximum induced emf uh, is four millivolts um, i think that would be the maximum over there because if you look at the gradient here and the gradient there okay the rate of change here is less than the rate of change there uh, in fact let's have a look at it so this would be how many blocks this would be two blocks here uh, between four and eight and this would be uh, it would be four blocks right yeah so whatever it is that's induced there should actually be uh, half of what we have there right so in that case it means it would be maximum between four and eight so there's our eight seconds there milliseconds rather uh, so it means that the maximum voltage or emf would actually be at that point so it means this point here because it's maximum it would be four uh, millivolts right okay you didn't need to in fact you can just write millivolts over there and just write the value four there and then can you see we've got a positive change here right okay so uh, let's talk about this one first so there's no change in current so as a result between 8 and 12 seconds so this would be 12 that be no change so it means that your induced uh, emf in this case would actually be zero and then uh, finally at this point you have a positive change but remember because of that negative there okay our induced e, uh, emf would actually be uh, positive uh, negative in that case got positive change induced emf becomes negative okay so it would be that value and remember the rate of change here is half the rate of change there so as a result it means that the emf here would actually be half what we had uh, in the previous one so i would have minus two over there i've already stated it's in millivolts so as a result this is what your graph would look like okay and there it is that is how the cookie crumbles all right um yeah so when it comes to uh, uh you know um you know this section of work uh please just have a look at uh, um electrodynamics okay i've i've made a video on it uh, perhaps some of the details might not be there but uh, perhaps i will add uh, the details later on all right so i hope that you were able to understand that and you enjoyed this question Okay, I know it's not many people's favorite section, but nonetheless, it has to done. It has to be done. It is what it is, right? Okay, and I'll see you guys next time when we uh, do uh, the another question. Okay, so I'll see you guys again next time. Shop shop.